We're talking about matrices today. The general matrix will take the form M by N, meaning M rows by N columns, forming some sort of rectangular display of numbers. To define your initial matrix, you're going to be using brackets. That tells MATLAB, hey, I'm going to define a matrix, get ready, and put those values inside into a matrix format. The simplest form of a matrix is going to either be one row, being a horizontal array, or one column, which is a vertical array. The first line we have here, H numbers, is defining a one by four array, same thing as a one by four matrix. If we run this, MATLAB knows, there it is, one by four, it pops up in our workspace, and you can actually double click these workspace variables to jump in and see your, your values and your variables in kind of an Excel format. Good for troubleshooting if you ever have issues with really big matrices. You can also define horizontal arrays or any matrix using, com using commas in between the individual components. This affects nothing whatsoever. It's more so for clarity and the user. The key character that does make a difference though is going to be the semicolon. Semicolons are how you create different rows in a matrix. Here we've got one in our first row. Semicolon tells, hey, jump to the next line to define the second row being just five, jump again, seven, jump again, three, and this creates our vertical array, four by one. All right, and those semicolons, are what we're keeping in between there to tell MATLAB to jump to the next row. Similarly, now that we are going out of the array realm into some bigger matrices, you can see we've defined a four by three here by doing three values here, semicolon, another three, semicolon, another three, and so on. And when this outputs, we've now got that figure that we're used to seeing, and here we've got four rows by three columns across. An alternative way to define your matrices, better for the, the visual viewer, because if let's say you've got something that's really long here, maybe you've got a, a, a 10 by 14, that can get massive and just disgusting to look at in your code. A cleaner way is simply to do what I've got here. You define each row on a line, ending that with a semicolon, and then you continue on the next line. And then you can see the similarity between how the matrix will physically look and the way you're defining it. It just gives it some more body in the code script itself. And there you go. Again, doesn't change any factors of the matrix, still gives you the same functionality. That's the basics for defining our matrices. In the next video, we'll go through indexing, which is how you can pick out the individual items within a matrix and use them in for loops, use them for reporting values, or saving things all over the place. Hey everyone, this is Phil from Phil Parisi Code. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you're getting something out of these. If you are, please throw a like and subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you. Keep on coding and enjoy the week.